For more on Africa's descendants in the Americas, I spoke with James Peterson. He's the director of Africana Studies at Lehigh University. I asked him if there are other problems within Latin America addressing the black communities. It is evident across Latin America, and I think, you know, it's interesting because there are a lot of ways in which we've ended up where we are. And so when think, people think about the African diaspora, they often think about the transatlantic slave trade. But we need to remember that there were, there were Africans present in Latin America prior to the transatlantic slave trade and prior to Columbus's quote-unquote discovery of America itself. And so we're talking about a long geopolitical history that's kind of been ignored. That's the predicate for us sort of not having uh, a sense of how visible the black presence and black identities are across Latin America. And so each country has its own sort of particular historical interface with um, the African diaspora. Some of that, again, is through like normal trade and different sort of migration patterns. Some of that is also through uh, the transatlantic slave trade, which lasted for hundreds of years. Um, but the reality is, is that there are some things that we can borrow from what happens in terms of how we think about race in America to help us to better understand how to sort of let these populations be seen as full-blown citizens across Latin America. You said things we can borrow when it comes to race in America, and I'm glad you said that because I didn't include Brazil, which has the second largest black population outside sign of Africa. It's a huge number, close to 86 million. The black community is often subjected to police violence. Statistically, Afro teenagers are said to be three times more likely to be killed compared to their white peers. Talk to me about what we see in Brazil and the similarities you see here in the United States with the Black Lives Matter uh, protests beginning here in the United States in recent years. So police brutality, uh, interface with the criminal justice system, um, access to education, life expectancy, health outcomes are, are, are things that we see are stratified along the lines of race in the United States. And yes, when we look at Afro-Latino populations in some Latin American countries, we can see comparable racial stratification across those different social institutions. And so some of the ways in which we've been able to address these things historically here in the U.S. are useful for us to think about how we might be able to address them uh, um, in other countries. So, for example, just the concept of being socially invisible. That is, this idea that you live in a society where the municipal, municipal governments and um, um, lighter-skinned populations refuse to see your humanity is a concept that we we've used to work through complex identity issues here in the U.S. If you think about the civil rights movement in total, people organizing and strategically trying to fight for legislative policies that address their social concerns, the civil rights is sort of a blueprint for the ways in which you can prosecute some of those same challenges in other countries. And obviously, yes, there's a long history of social movements, including the Black Lives Matter movement, which has been very, very direct about confronting the criminal justice system here in the U.S. that you can see around the world. It's not just in Latin America. There are other countries around the world that are borrowing those tactics, claiming that movement as a way to think critically about how criminal justice systems operate in societies that are poorer and darker. So are perceptions changing, and if not, what needs to be done for them to, for these uh, changes to take place? Perceptions are changing. You know, we, the, the sort of vanguard of the perception changes that will ultimately lead into real change in, in our communities is that you're starting to see the language change. So, so um, the, the idea that Afro-Latina and Afro-Latino identities are identities that we actually talk about um, in the academic and in the communal space is one step in, in, in the right direction. When you, you think about it, if we were to do a survey of how many international news items even mention the phrase Afro-Mexican, this segment would probably be one of a handful. And so the idea that journalists and scholars have to begin to talk about these things, continue to do the research about what are the social challenges in those specific communities, and what are the complicated ways in which race operates in these sort of cross-ethnic cultural uh, uh, situations. That's the kind of work that we do in the academy that I think really helps and serves communities. And all the scholars who do work around Afro-Latino and Afro-Latina identity are already currently engaged in these matters.